Hi everybody, my name is Lisa. Welcome to Junk Journal Gems. I'm scooting my chair up here so I'm close to my work. I did a little playing around with a new product that I ordered and I tell you what, I love this stuff. So, and I've hardly started to use it and already I'm in love. This is the Ranger Distressed Texture Paste Sparkle. So I'm gonna try to come closer to the camera so you can see that. It's the sparkle. And if, I'm hoping the camera will pick this up. I put this through a stencil. Hold on, I buried my stencil in my project packet. This stencil is called Crackle Layering. It's right down here. Oh boy. Anyway, Crackle Layering. It's a Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stencil. I love it. Absolutely love it. And this is what it looks like. So I put this sparkle paste and it's clear on some acetate through that stencil and I love it. This is what it looks like on the acetate and we're gonna use this today. But I also tried it on some deli paper and it's hard for you to see. There. Um, on some deli paper and this is what it looks like on here. Now when I use this, I did mix it with a tiny bit of Distress Ink, the speckled egg. I have another color on order and it's taking forever to get here, but you know, I dare not wait because I have an idea in my head. So I'll show you what I made out of it because I had this idea in my brain. This is a window pocket. So it's already got the folds in it so that I can, let me grab a sample page out, so that I can place it on a page. And this gives you a hint of the kind of journal I'm working on next. I can't wait for this one. It's just, I think it's gonna be beautiful. But it will glue down like this. I used the deli paper version of the texture paste sparkle. And you open it up, there is another piece of um, acetate in here so that you can use it as a pocket. Fun, huh? So that's what I'm gonna show you how to make today. I'm gonna show you how I easily did the, made the glass for the window, and then how I made the window itself. So let's get crack lacking. Whoops, I've got stuff flying everywhere. I also got one of these inspired by Mr. Tim Holtz himself. I got one of these um, media mats. I like it. I ordered mine off Amazon. And his idea of keeping it in some kind of protectant is great because it is, I don't know, I guess I would call it sticky. And if you did not do that, everything and anything would stick to it. So what I did was I put my cool little mat down. Probably don't have to do this, but I'm being fussy about it, I guess. And then I think next I will show you how I put it on the acetate. I wonder what I use this for. Oh, I know, I used it for the back part of the window. So let's just do this. And then, actually, let's, I'm gonna tape this down first just with some junky washi. If I can get it. Tape that down and that way I can peekaboo at it. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put my acetate down in there. 
Doesn't matter really which way I put it in. Six one half dozen of the other, right? Stay down. Don't make a liar out of me. Grab your palette knife, which became a tool last night for tearing a book apart. I am the poster child of how to use your tools inappropriately. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, where's my husband when I need him? Oh, there we go. Just call me muscles. All right, I'm just going to put a little bit on my mat here. Maybe a little more than that. Put the cap back on so it can stick tight again. And then I take, can you see me? Yes. And then I take my Distress Ink. Now, Timmy himself said you do not want to use alcohol inks. You want to use the Distress, <clears throat> excuse me, the Distress Inks because something about the ingredients. Last time I, it wasn't enough ink. I'm going to put in two drops. Always start with less though. Just start with one. You can always put more in. I only knew to put two in because last time it wasn't enough. But I guess the alcohol ink does, makes it runny or something. Don't quote me on that, but Tim said don't do it, so I'm not. Okay. This way it gives it just, with that blue in there, that frosted look, just makes it yummy. Come on. And then just come in and put it down. Now this stuff, the sparkle is a little on the loose side. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be a tight mixture. If you've ever used the, um, what's it called? I got that too, the snowfall paste. That's way thicker. Pearl, no. Oh my gosh, you guys, my girls are being naughty. Their dad's not home yet, so everybody's all in anticipation of dad coming home. I really shouldn't scrape along here with my metal palette knife, but... I'm trying to show my friends something here, so I'm getting serious about my business. Gotta get stuff done. Oop, I think I hear dad home. So all the dogs are probably gonna start to lose their minds in a second here. Okay, there's our window. Now, before I lift that up, I'm going to get my baby wipe out here and wipe up my mat. <clears throat> and my palette knife. I think some night I'm just going to sit here and make a bunch of these just to have on hand. I've been having so much fun with it. That was just, it's just fabulous. In fact, then when I peel it up, there's our iced window. Cool, huh? So it shows up white and then it dries clear with the sparkles in it. So there it is, wet. And here it is dry. Cool. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for now. I've got to take a layer off. I'm getting hot. Okay, clean this up quick. 
I will say with these stencils that have these fine lines, be really careful when you are drying, oh, drying, wiping them because you don't want to ruin the image that you can get from it. I've done that mistakenly with a different stencil and big bad bummer. Okay, I think I did a good job. Yep. Okay. I'm going to set that aside to dry as well. Whoops. thought I stuck it in my window. Okay. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. And that. And this. And then all that I did is the, this plastic came on the media mat and I cut this portion off. So I had one that is the usual Tim Holtz stencil size. And then this is the piece that was left. So then I have a bigger one too. But then I just slide it in here. And it's protected from getting schnibbles on it. Oh my goodness. All right. Now I'm actually going to get my cutting mat out here. All right, we've got the cutting mat out. Let me dry that off a little. Now let's make the window piece. Where's my paper? Here it is. I just have this paper pad of wood grain papers and I got this in like a, a sale bin at one of the craft stores. What's the brand? I don't know. Joanne's stores. So from Joanne's. Who knows if they still have these or not. The last one I made out of black. Maybe this one I'll do in grays. Just for something different. So I wrote these out and we'll follow along with this. So the main frame of the window, the entire piece here, I cut four wide by five and a half high. So we're going to do that again. And I liked it with these lines going up and down. So four wide, <coughs> excuse me by five and a half high. Now this one, my cutter is not, oh, it is five and a half. Ding, 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 ding. Good deal. Whoops. Okay, so once I did that, then I called it a hinge because I, I couldn't remember, <laughs> remember what else to call it. But where the folds are on the piece here, I just grabbed my board here and I went in. Are we in all the way? A quarter of an inch here <clears throat> and a quarter of an inch here. I had two eighths written down on my sheet and I was I, I, I was wrong. Same with this. Kind of went cattywampus on me. There we go. Better. All right. So once you do that, grab your scissors and cut these fellas off here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut these at an angle too. And that way, when we fold it on our page, then it won't stick out. So here's what that looks like then. Okay. So there's that. Now where is where things get a little... So I'm going to cross this off so you guys aren't confused. That was a quarter an inch. Okay. 
And then what we did was, or I did, you wanna grab your ruler. And then on the back side, I marked where I wanted my window to be. So here I marked in pencil um, two eighths inch from left and right. So a quarter. Why didn't I just say that? Lisa Michelle. Okay, and then I measured down a half inch from the top and the bottom. So right here, that's what we're marking. Half inch, half inch. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to continue marking down so I have a straight line when I make my full line. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same over here. I don't want to do that. My husband just came home from bow hunting. I'll have to ask him when I'm done with the video here if he got anything. I doubt it because otherwise he would have been home either later or sooner. That's my guess. And usually I get some kind of a text or a picture or something, and I didn't get that, so he must not have gotten anything today. The guys all saw a big buck on the property, so everybody's trying to hold out for the big guy. be thankful for the meat. Okay, so then I come down through here and lightly make my lines. Something is rattling. I can't tell what's rattling. I wonder if you guys can hear it. If you can, I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. Huh, I don't know. It's <laughs> something against the wall. Why does that seem off? It's best to double check your lines and make sure everything is good because the last thing you want is a crooked window. Unless you want a wonky window. <whistles> Pearl. I wonder if my husband's in the shower. Is that why it's making that noise? Uh, I don't know. I've never heard that before. Okay, so there is the outside frame. Now these two are where we're going to um, have our folds, but we are going to measure out where the the middle is so we're at three inches so it's an inch and a half is the middle so 
just measure one more just because it makes me feel better. I'm going to do one more. that's our middle. Now, while we're at it, let's also mark out the interior window panes. So I did three eighths from the top and the bottom. Let's mark that quick. Two, three. One, two, three. Three eighths from the top and bottom. So weird. I can't I can't stop monkeying around with whatever that noise is. Okay, and then two eighths from the sides. Or a quarter of an inch. Let's do that down here. Girl, please. There's serious crafting going on here, Pearl. You can't be disturbing me and my friends. Okay, so there's the top and bottom. Now, in the middle, I had about an eighth of an inch of a mullion here. That's that piece in the middle of the panes. So an eighth of an inch. So how did I do that? I don't know, Lisa, how did you do that? So what I did was this is about four and a quarter. So it'd be about two and an eighth. And then I'm gonna go over a little. And then what did I say? The mullion was, where's the mullion? An eighth, it's just slightly over an eighth. Same on this side. Okay, so then what I did was, just to make things simple, I just took and drew the line down the whole thing. Just when we can, make, make life simple. Oh, how did I have it? I must have had it two eighths, yeah, from here. My bad. Two eighths. I know it seems futzy now, but once you get all this done, then it's Smooth sailing. So we did two eights from that side. Okay. Okay, 
we got those. Let's do that over here. I did that one. Now I need this one. Wake up, Lisa. Oh, I know I haven't been making many videos lately, you guys, but between having migraines and just it's busy at work right now. I work with health insurance and it is the annual election period right now. So it's our busiest time of the year. What am I doing? I don't know. I need a nap. Can't talk and mark at the same time. Okay, so here's our boxes. So let's finish drawing our lines and you'll, it'll start to make more sense. I'm gonna review through the measurements here. So the overall piece is four wide by five and, is this one five or five and a half? Yep, yeah, five and a half tall, okay? Then a quarter of an inch in from top, or excuse me, from bottom and sides, are where you want to mark your folds. And then you're going to measure down um, a half an inch and inward um, a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch, half an inch. And then you're going to go uh, three eighths from the top of your opening of the window, three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, and again, quarter, 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 a little over one eighth. Okay, so let's finish drawing out the lines. If you have any questions, I feel like this is hard to explain. Um, feel free to drop a note in the comments. And nothing is saying that your window has to be the exact same measurements as my window. You can make your window as big or as small as you want your window to be. That's the beauty of life. like I did this crooked. There's that and that. I'm just going to eyeball it because that's what I do best. Now if I have a wonky window, you remind me that I'm the one that chose to eyeball it. Feel free to say it. Lisa, you're the one. You said. Okay, so there's our window. Now I take a craft knife with my straight edge. And first I'm going to cut out these little window doodads. I like to go over a little bit with my line so I can see where I have to stop. So what I mean by that is I like to take this out a little further than I actually did so I can see where to stop at that mullion so I don't cut through it. I mean, if you don't want a mullion, you don't have to, but I wanted one. See, I can't, I can't, I can't. I need, I need my little cheat. Take your time so you don't overshoot your mark. I hope my head isn't getting in the way here because I haven't made my hair pretty today.
I'm going to do the same thing here. Just enough. So as I know. So using this technique, actually, you could also make your own advent windows and an advent calendar. I'm going to turn it around so we can cut out the bottom. And then we can be daring. Take it out. Take out the little, ooh, ooh. take out the little window panes. So let's see how much encouragement they'll need. And sometimes at the corners, you do need a little finesse. Girl, we aren't gonna do that, remember? So I just come in here and gently Coax it. These could come in handy for little clusters. Whoops, we forgot a line. Or I forgot a line. You guys didn't even say anything. What? a little extra coaxing over here. There we go. So now we need to cut down the middle of the window so it can open. I need to cut across. Silly old me. Lisa, Lisa. So, I did that right. How did I boof? I did that. I didn't come down here for it. Lisa. And I need to come across the top and the bottom. In here so I don't hurt myself. And there is our window opening. Now, what we also want to do is get our scoreboard back out and come in. I like to do it from this side and score along this line. Now it may 
not line up perfectly with your scoreboard. So just move it so it is where you have a groove in your board. Oops. Got a little schnibble. Okay. Just needs a little groove there so it can now, the other thing you wanna do is come back in and erase your pencil marks because you can't really, I don't know how you would put paper over the top of it. I don't know, I suppose if there's a will, there's a way. But you don't wanna see your pencil marks on the inside of your window when you open the window doors. You could also use this technique to um, make a door that opens and have a window in your door. Good enough for now. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Now, what I did next was I took my ink, what did I use? I used my VersaFine Onyx Black and a cosmetic sponge. And I found it made the edges pop better if I came around with the ink. And did a little zhuzhing. This is gonna drive me crazy here. What are you doing, Pearl? There's no way getting around this not being messy, I don't think. Do the bottoms. Just be careful you're not going over the edge too much, otherwise it's gonna look kind of gloppy and you don't want that either. Okay, so what did I do on the other one? I did come in. Hi, Pearl. Yeah, we're making a window. Do you guys, well, I don't know if I turn this a little, if you can see, you wanna come up here? Come here. Can you guys see her? Hi, Pearl. <laughs> She's so wanting my attention right now. Now I messed you up. Sorry about that, but you always hear me talking to her. Pearl, honey, you're going to have to get down. I can't play right now. I'm busy. Okay? He's busy. So there's that. We'll come around this side. Fold this up and do the same. Now, to do the inside of the um, windows, I just kind of come in and go like this as best I can. Here's where having, I don't know, a malleable or bendable cosmetic sponge works best. <laughs> Pearl is sitting here listening to me talking to you like, like I must be talking to her. 
I wonder if it is kind of confusing to pets if we're in a room, no one's clearly in there with us, and we're talking, if they think we're talking to them. Hmm, never really thought about that before. And don't call me crazy, but I do talk to my dogs a lot. There are my buddies. We're getting there. Sorry if you can hear my husband talking. He's in the room right below me. Okay. There is our window frame. Let me get rid of this. <clears throat> and then let's get our glass. So we need two, actually two pieces of acetate again. Just as a reminder, we need one clear one and then we need one with the sparkle on it, the sparkle paste. We need our piece to be about how big? I always cheat and mark on my ruler because otherwise, inevitably, I get to cutting it and I'm like, now what did I say? What were those measurements? Oh, big. Hmm. This is going to be interesting because I can't really write on the acetate now, can I? I could with my Sharpie pen, but. Hmm. How am I going to do that? I have these Sharpie pens. I like writing with them. That's good for now. Save that scrap. Now, we need, oh, I wonder if I, to take this edge off here so I don't confuse that for part of the window. This didn't have the sparkle on it. Okay. So now I cut this just about um, three and seven eighths high. And now for the individual window strips, it is one, two, three, one and three eighths inch wide. Okay. Here we 
there's one of them. And here will be the other. All right, let's see how good we did. We did pretty good, my friends. We are some good crafters. Come on. <clears throat> All right, one at a time. Let's glue this down. I did glue the other one down just with the art glitter glue. It dries clear, so if it smushes over into your window glass a little bit, um, you'll be fine. Come on. Oh, what's it happening? There we go. Guess it's getting to be about the time that I need a little refill. Make sure you get it down that mullion. Okay, and we'll put this little guy down. Window number one. Let's do window number two next. Put the pin on before I forget that. And fit our window here. Now, what I didn't do as a second step, I did it at the end the last time. Look at that, you guys. That is so cool. Can you see that? Amazing. And then I have these tiny fasteners. Um, what color do I? I think I still want to use silver. Hard to grab. And this is particularly why I wanted, I think these are Tim Holtz Tiny Fasteners. And then I just eyeball where I need my hole. I need to put it through a hole. You could put buttons on here if you don't have Tiny Fasteners. You could also knot a piece of string as like a string pole. That'd be cool too. Then you want to make sure you're putting this brad in so you can fold this over top and bottom, not sideways, otherwise it's going to stick out here. Why are things always easier when you're not on camera? There we go. Murphy's Law or whatever. Isn't that cute? Come on. Don't do this to me. Well, what is going on here? There we go. I'm just so itty bitty. Okay, so there's our window. I'm actually holding it upside down. 
And then we need to glue this piece on the inside here. So get my Sharpie marker back out. Mark it on the inside of the fold here to cut, boink. And up here to cut, boink. Whoop. Let's cut this side first just because it's shorter. Make sure it'll fit. Yep. So then we just need the art glitter glue again. Come in here and glue that piece down. mush the glue around on there a little bit. So then that is the back. Oh, I shouldn't have. No, that's right. Got myself for a second. So there is the pocket. So your um, tag or whatever goes behind the second piece of acetate, but you still have something there holding in your tag if you open the window. I'll show you what I mean. So we put this, here, I'll do this so you can see it better. We put this in there. You open up your window and you can see your tag inside. Cool. So that is pretty fun. I cannot wait to use these in journals. So here's one with the, um, the deli paper that makes it look like a really frosty window, snowy window. Here it is with just the acetate and the um, sparkle paste. And I am in love with these. I cannot wait to use them. So I hope you guys give this a try. It's so much fun. And um, let me know if you come up with other uses for the sparkle paste as well. I, I, I see trouble in my future with it. Thank you so much for joining me. Click the, the like, the thumbs up for like, and hit subscribe if you're not a subscriber so that you're notified um, of future videos if you click the bell for notification. And as always, please have a great day.